Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. And thank you for allowing me into your home or into your space. If you like what I talk about, please like, subscribe and share. I tend to talk about a lot of different subjects, but I'm hoping that they'll raise awareness or give you a tip or, you know, warn you about some impending situation. So, yeah, I talk about a lot of different things. So today I was sent a video and the lady in the video used to have long hair. And um, she's shaved it all off. She's married. She shaved it all off. I assume that her husband loves her either way. But she shaved it all off right down to really, really short. And what she's saying to people now is that she's going to take them through her hair journey. Now, my issue with that is just one, really, that everyone has different types of hair. The structure is different. It's scientifically proving, proven that hair differs depending on what race, ethnicity, the ethnicity you are. For example, um, white people have the most dense hair. Asian have the most strongest hair. Black people have the most curliest hair. And so, you know, if you've got somebody who's mixed with Asian and then they're going to tell you to use certain products for your hair it's going to work for them because they're mixed with asian and they've got a combination of um, hair follicles and structure so for somebody say like me who's totally negroid that remedy is not going to work for me so what you'll find is you'll find a lot of women they have long hair and they'll show you when it was short and they'll make you believe that by using certain products, your hair is just going to be as long or turn out the same. When it's not, it's false advertising. And people have to realise that it could be genetic. It could be a number of reasons why your hair doesn't grow. And if it's a number of reasons why your hair doesn't grow, no product on earth is going to make it grow. So it's all about individual and each individual has to use their own regimen. And that could just mean from use damping it with water. It could mean just, you know, putting a little um, coconut oil in it to make it the strands go right to the end. It could be a number of things, but you have to understand what your hair type is. And a lot of people think because black hair is thick, that it's strong and everything, but it's fine. It's really quite delicate. And so when we're putting all these products like perms and bleach and stuff like that and braid, even braids, I mean, braids is a lovely natural look, but it makes your hair recede. It stretches the hair, the hair breaks. So anyway, I did a poem about my hair journey. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about this hair situation. I was about 10 when my mum called me in. And she sat me down in front of the stove. When she burned my ear, I recoiled in fear when the hot comb came towards my afro. Every week it was the same, sooner if it rained, because that's how frizzy it gets. My mum would frown, saying I'd let her down for allowing my pressed hair to get wet. Then came the chemical straightener took its place. Straight hair in my face, I felt proud of my shiny hairstyle and it wouldn't change back even if it got wet but it came expensive after a while. Besides the perm had a tendency to burn so to me it became quite plain that if I had to wear rubber gloves to get the style that I loved there had to be something wrong with my brain. So along came the weave, another way to deceive, because it camouflaged most of my hair. It served the purpose it should, while making me feel good, and I could flaunt it without care. But the weave became expensive, and the time it took extensive, and I got bored with its limitations. So I then started to braid, which allowed my hair to behave, and gave me the license to be more creative. But the tight braid stressed the hair. My hairline receded in despair. And I had to abandon this wonderful creation. 
So wigs came into play, which allowed me to display myself in different dimensions. But then wigs were temporary. They dulled and were no longer bouncy. And sometimes I felt like a fraud. If I put on a short wig one day and a long wig the next, the response I would get is, good Lord. Some people berate CJ Walker for making our hair straight when she popularised the press and curl style. But for most of us, it's convenience and also expedience. It doesn't mean we're trying to look white. Historically, long hair has been associated with allure. Women with short hair were considered plain. So would a black man still go after long hair that lacked luster in favour of a natural girl who looked exactly the same? Apart from the grooming process and hairstyles complementing the way one is dressed, there isn't much else to compare. So why would we want to finance hair products that continue to give us a Eurocentric version of hair? I don't want to grow locks because it would put me in a box. So what are the options for me? So rather than distress, sometimes I cut off my tress so that my hair and my mind is free. Then I feel like an African. My hair will state where I come from, the most original living organism. But one thing I know is whether it does or doesn't grow, self-appreciation comes from within. And I did that. I did that a few years ago because I got so much stress about me wearing hair, me wearing wigs. And I don't have to justify why I wear wigs to anyone. You know, we all have our own reasons. But what I did want to talk about is the hair. And when people are going into the shop and spending all this money on hair, they have to take into consideration that every hair, well, every type of hair is different. So when you see people on these videos saying, buy this, whether it's black castor oil or whether it's keratin, whatever it is. There's so many, olive oil, castor oil. I mean, there are so many. I remember at work, my work, <laughs> everything happens at my workplace, but there was an African woman and she was in remission from cancer and she went bald. Anyway, the next thing you know, she's got hair. And it's, you know, she's got it back in a ponytail and it's permed. And she came up to me and she said to me, so I forget what she said. And I said to her, I don't know how we got into the topic of hair. But she said, that's when she told me her story. She said that she never had any hair. She was bald, you know, from the treatment. So she made this mixture and she said she's selling it. But she said she wouldn't sell it to me because I worked with her. I was a colleague. But she would like to monitor my hair growth. Anyway, she, uh, she asked me to get the ingredients, but she wouldn't charge me for the product. And then she would add all the binding agents and everything else it needed. So I needed to get um, essential pumpkin oil, which was about £22.80. It was quite expensive. And then pepper, essential peppermint oil. And it was quite a big bottle. So that was about £18.90. And I gave her the two bottles and within like a week she had made up this concoction in a big tub. And so I don't know if I didn't use it long enough. I used it for like about two months and I didn't see no difference. I mean, sometimes I wanted to see a difference so badly. I think I did see a difference. But in actuality, if I put my head under the light, there was still that uneven where there's, you know, my hair grows high in one place and it's really really low in another and it's because follicles have died and if your follicles die it's really really hard to revive them now some experts say that if your follicles die they're dead other experts say they can be revived. I think it all depends whether they're really dead or dead. If they're really dead, I don't think they can be revived. No matter how much you massage, no matter what you put in it. So you have to understand when you're trying to buy all these products that say your hair will grow. And then you see these women on videos saying, oh, look, I didn't have hair one minute. 
and I've got hair the next minute. You have to look at their, whether it's their complexion, their genetics, you know, their parents, have their parents got long hair? What type of hair do they have? I mean, when you think about um, Asian, you know, they have the strongest hair and they have 10 layers of um, follicles. And whereas um, Caucasian people, they have five layers of follicles. I don't know how many layers um, black people have, but they're supposed to have the finest hair, even though it looks the thickest. It only looks thick because it's curled and it's spiraled, but it's very, very fragile hair. And so when we as black women are putting all these different products on fine hair and some people will get the perm that says for thick hair or strong hair when they really need the pro the perm that's for sensitive hair i mean if it's working it works for some people because depending on their genetics it might just work for them but what i'm trying to say is that one shoe doesn't one size doesn't fit all so you can't look at one person and say oh it's worked for them it's going to work for me because it won't because the st there's the structure, there's the characteristics of the hair follicles, there's all kind of things going on. And I think, you know, women are under pressure because even from biblical days, a woman's crown was her glory. They say a woman's beauty is her hair. And so you have all of this pressure um, from whether it's the media or whatever to say, you know, you should have long hair but i don't believe that that is the reason why every woman wears a wig or a weave because they want to emulate a western person i believe there's a lot of factors that go into it, a lot of dynamics whether it is like my hair it doesn't grow even whether it's whether or not it's it's laziness i mean my daughter she's got long hair down to her shoulders beautiful long hair and yet she'll she'll cane row it and put a little short wig on. When her fellow sees her hair up, they're like, bloody hell, why do you wear a wig when you've got all that hair underneath? It's convenience. So, so not everybody who wears wigs has an issue with their own hair. Sometimes if they're getting up in the morning and they want to go to work and they want to look half decent, and if they've got kids and all kinds of other things going on, they put on a wig and it's already styled, boop, boop, they're out of there. They don't have to faff around um, oiling their hair and brushing it and combing it and stretching it and all that kind of stuff. Black hair is not very easy to maintain, even if it's natural. It's still difficult to maintain. So, um, there, was an, there was some technical bits, but I think I've covered it. Um, there's a texture, the structure of the hair that makes a difference. The cuticles make a difference. Some hair, some are more spaced further than others. Like Asian hair, their hair is flat and apparently it's the strongest hair. Um, and black hair is fine. But yeah, I've said that. I've said that. And yeah, apparently, even though um, black hair sometimes feels dry, it's not really dry. But what happens is... Because the hair curls around, apparently the oils in the hair don't get to the end. So I would suggest a lot of times, I mean, sometimes they just say you just need to damp it with water and don't use shampoos, just use conditioners twice a week. It doesn't need all of these ointments in the shops, all of these fancy bottles that they put to make your hair grow, to moisturize your hair. You know, you don't need to waste your money on all those products. It is about understanding your hair and knowing your hair and knowing what to do for yourself, your specific circumstances. So each one of us are unique. So all I'm trying to say is, is that when you see these videos and you see a woman saying, oh, I don't have any hair and look what happened to me in six weeks. You know, it's more than just looking at that person. It is knowing about her background her race, her genetics, her ethnicity, her ethnicity, if she's got any mixtures in her, because sometimes these people, they come next minute, you see they've got long hair. Sometimes it's not even their hair that they're advertising. Sometimes they use these weaves and say, oh, this is my hair, it's grown. They're being paid to sell a product, some people. 
to advertising a product. So what I'm saying is don't get disheartened if you if your head doesn't grow. Um, everyone is difficult, different, difficult, the hair is difficult, but everyone is different and you have to kind of think, okay, maybe my hair just wasn't meant to grow. And the funny thing is, is that some of these men say, oh, you want to be natural, you want to be natural and blah, blah, blah. And, I, and I've seen women out and women who've braved enough you know they're probably looking for a partner but they braved and gone out there and they've got a ball patch here and a ball patch here and a bit of high bit here and not me brother but anyway they've braved it you think anybody's talking to them please no one ain't talking to them and I remember, it's okay, if I bleach, I used to bleach my hair, my hair short and cropped. Actually, I'm going to use that as my um, photo for this video. But my hair was short, cropped, bleach, and I love it. But how long the bleach damages your hair? You know, I don't want black hair. I'm, I'm kind of eccentric. So I love to do things that are a bit different. But you can't bleach your hair forever. And that's also damaged my follicles, I think. But... Yeah, if I've got that kind of hairstyle, yeah, people might talk to me. But if I, when I used to go out with my little, what my mum would call dry head, <laughs> you know, and I, my hair was black and ordinary, no one ain't going to talk to me. I go out without my wig, the man them just, you know, swamp. So, you know, even men are superficial. When they talk about they love natural hair, a lot of times that hair will have to be beautiful whether it's locks whether it's a lovely afro whether it's beautiful braids that's when they mean natural hair that's what they mean they don't mean natural hair when it's all gappy gappy and some hair's gone out through some kind of disorder or some you know some problem maybe alopecia some difficulty that the person is experiencing or maybe even cancer they're not talking about women like that going natural because they, they run from them a mile off if those people are looking for men. But they're talking about the women who are natural and who have lovely natural hair. But make somebody go out there and um, have, you know, like I said, you know, a little piece missing here and a little piece missing there and then even though I'm dressed nice, you know. You, you, you see the man and look upon them away. They ain't talking to them. So we need to get real and, and stop the superficial. You'll find that some women, fortunate enough if they are, well, a lot of women that I know that have that kind of, um, unfortunate enough not to have a full head of hair and they're married and their husbands accept them for the way they are, they will go out like that because they don't give a toss. They're not looking for endorsements. They're already loved the way they are, but a lot of people, unless you meet somebody through work, unless you meet somebody through the education system, unless you meet somebody um, through some other means, and you, through friends or something, and you've actually got to know them, but... If you're going out to maybe a social arena or a club or something, you're not going to find those men talking to those women. They're not. They'll talk to the ones, even if their hair is short, their hair is full, it's nicely shaped, it's got nice, per you know, it might be permed at the side, it's nicely styled. Those are the ones that they'll talk to. So, you know, let's not get it twisted, peeps. Women are, are under a lot of pressure, single women are under a lot of pressure sometimes if they're not fortunate enough to have a full head of beautiful hair. And all I'm saying is that, you know, the advertisers should not exploit that and make people who haven't, whose follicles are dead or damaged and you know there's no way on earth that the hair is going to come through in that particular part apart from transplant you know they shouldn't make them spend th hundreds and thousands of pounds trying to revive something that's dead that's all i'm saying now if there is something out there that can revive something that's dead all well and good but i would have to see that that person is natural Born natural.
No mix up, mix up, no mix with India, no mix up with white, no mix up with anything. Just black through and through. And therefore hair follicles are dead and they can bring them to life. That's what I would have to see in order to believe that it can work. Just my opinion. Just my opinion. Doesn't mean it's fact. I'm open to comments, but that's all for now. Bye-bye.